Hello, everyone. My name is Maisha. And I'm Dante. Maisha, I'm so happy to be here with you today. Right, but social distancing. Hold on, Maisha. I got six you feet. was a little close to me, Maisha. <laughs> hey, guys, welcome to our online experience. We are so thrilled that you're here with us today. Now, before we get into the message, because it's a good one, we need you to do a couple things for us. We need you to like, share, subscribe. Say like, like, share, share, subscribe. subscribe. We need you to like, Like, share, share, subscribe. (laughs) But in all seriousness, guys, we need you to like the video. We need you to share the video with all your friends and your family. We need you to subscribe to our YouTube page so you can be notified anytime we post the video. And we also want to hear from you. We want to hear what you think. So please comment below. Yes. And as we continue with the remainder of our service and we head into worship, I'd like to take just a moment to pray with you all. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to give you thanks. Thanks for all the things that you have done for us, Lord God. We ask you to please keep us focused on you during this time, Lord God. Allow us to be united as a nation and just turn to you, Lord God, when we are in need. Lord, I ask that you open our minds and our hearts as we prepare for today's message and today's worship experience. And it's in your holy name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Now get ready to join us for worship. So in this song, it's called I Will Follow, and it's just talking about how much we will follow Jesus no matter what happens. So let's just sing this out loud and just scream at Jesus right now. Come on, clap your hands like this. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. Where you move, I'll move.
right guys, so we're going to be driving by different students' homes and dropping off quarantine snacks. Hey, we might just show up at your home, you never know. And they have no idea that we're on our way. Well, we want you guys to hang along for the ride. Stay tuned. about to hand off some snack packs. Jaden! Hey, Jaden! Hey! 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 Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us again today for our time of message. My name is Xavier. I'm joined right here with Miss Randy. And we've been having a conversation. We were actually just uh, doing some reminiscing. <laughs> of course, quarantine allows us time to think back over life and all of that stuff. We're thinking about this game we used to play <laughs> in middle and high school, and yes. it's called MASH. MASH. And MASH was a game where you got a chance to essentially dream about what your future your unattainable future. Yeah, your unattainable future <laughs> could be like. And so there were all types of stuff like yes. we would, you know, you had to decide like who you're going to marry. Right, and there it were would like, be these, like these categories. So yeah. you, who you would marry, what kind of car you would drive, mm -hmm. what kind of job you would have. Mm -hmm. And then MASH was whether you were going to live in a mansion, apartment, a shack, or a house. Yeah. <laughs> like who even thinks to put shack <laughs> like, as one of the options? As an option, like mansion or a shack. And you'd always put like the funniest stuff up there like I remember one time I was like you're gonna marry baby bop from Barney I just thought about something you guys did you even grow up watching Barney no no, no. so if I make a Barney reference I say baby bop you might not have any idea who that who, is right you've maybe seen it before and maybe Barney had like a remake or something right so you need to let me know down in the comments whether or not you know who Barney is I, I don't think they know like my kids don't know who Barney is like oh my god no okay but here's the other crazy thing I just I just thought about mm -hmm. is it's like you would choose like the categories of your cars but I'm like, we're aging ourselves because I remember like my dream car being like an Escalade. <laughs> like that was they the barely car. Even make they make Escalades still, but they're not like right. I'm like, but kids today they would be like, I want a Tesla. A Tesla. Yeah, like Teslas were not a thing. They were not a at thing. All. No. My dream car used to be like, well, Lamborghinis have always been like a thing. It's always been like the mm -hmm. car. So that was like the like the nicest car you could have, or a Hummer. Yes. People used to want a Hummer H2 <laughs> so bad. And you might not know what a Hummer is, but it's like a Jeep on steroids. It's the biggest, boxiest, mm -hmm. most environmental killing machine you've ever seen in your life. But wait, not just a Hummer, a Hummer with a system. Yeah, like a sound system. And so rims. Like you had to have rims. Seat. and. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't let nobody ride in your car if you had a system because the whole back seat was a speaker. Not. You could not. Let's let's do a mini version. Okay. okay so okay. if you had to choose your dream job, mm -hmm. 
your dream house or location of your house, mm -hmm. and then like a celebrity lifestyle you would want to be? What, what, would, what would be your answers? Well, my dream job would probably be student pastor at one community church. Uh, my dream come house. On. Probably, come on, my dream house would probably be in Anna, Texas, where I currently reside. Oh my gosh. And a celebrity lifestyle no would probably be my own. I think that I'm probably celebrity. All of that stuff. Yes, I am a celebrity. My mom mm. loves me. Like she's like my biggest fan. My mom oh. absolutely loves me. My wife loves me. My it friends love me. The list probably stops there, those <laughs> yeah, two. No, no, anyway. Okay, so dream job, if I wasn't a youth pastor, I would love to be like an influencer who could like travel the world and like talk to people, uh, meet people, eat good food, post it all over Instagram and just and get, get paid. paid for it. Yeah, and get paid for it. Get paid to like know people and have a lot of people to follow you. Okay. Um, dream house location would be like Calabasas, California. So I love Calabasas. California, like out in the hills and, you know, just away from the city of L.A. Okay. Um, and my celebrity lifestyle would probably be Drake because Drake just has like this interesting lifestyle. He's like the Raptors ambassador. And then like he has a bigger pool than Kanye and like all of that stuff. He does. His pool right. is bigger than Kanye's. And I'm a huge swimming pool fan. So that's my, my goal right there. OK, cool. That's that's fun. OK, so let me see if I could choose a dream. I would want to be like a travel photographer. Okay, I, I okay, would just, I see that. I would just imagine you could travel everywhere. Now, I don't know how to take pictures, but um, you know, it just seems like a cool job. You travel, you know, take some you know, food pictures, you can eat whatever you want. Okay, so travel photographer. I would want a house, I don't really care where, but just a beach house. Like on the mm. beach where I could wake up and read, look at the ocean somewhere. That's too much pressure, though. I mean, what? this is your dream, though. This yeah, is this, is, this is my dream. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would say celebrity lifestyle. I mean, I would have to go with Beyonce because I feel like she is an influencer. She's got like several beach houses. And they just, you that's, know. That's... Anyway, well, we were reminiscing <laughs> about that. If you joined us last week, we were talking a little bit about our past, and we talked about the woman at the well. Yes. And Pastor Aaron shared some interesting stuff about his past. And, yes. So if, if you, you did not see you it. You got to go get all I'm not laughing the at him. Dirt. I promise you I'm not laughing at him. He's my Sorry, friend. He's dirt. He has some, some stuff in his past that he's not proud of, just like me. And we did like verify you. that it is in his past. We did verify that it, his, is, it is in his past. He is fit to be your, your pastor. Bless the Lord. Yeah. It is in his past. Mm -hmm. So we talked a little bit about our past and how it doesn't shame us but we should use it to shape us oh that's so good yeah, and so we've been having that conversation and right. so this week we're gonna have a new conversation though yeah I'm I'm glad we're talking not about the past because my past we don't have enough time <laughs> to talk about my past let's just say we, he's not lying uh you know what once mm -hmm. again I feel like every time the camera comes on you come for me no 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 no. I made sure that I put on lotion today so you can't talk about me being ashy my knees are covered mm -hmm. I'm covered up to my neck my head is covered because I don't got a haircut I'm I'm scot-free today redemption um but today so last week we kind of talked about the lady at the well and this encounter she had with Jesus. We're going to shift gears a little bit, um, and we're going to take a look at the story of David. And not just a particular story, but a few instances in his life where David had to really make some decisions to kind of live in the day. Um, a lot of times when it comes to where God is trying to take us, we're, we're really kind of held back or weighed down by things that may have happened in our past that we haven't allowed God to redeem us from, or we're not reminded that God is forgiving and every day his mercies are new. Um, and then the other thing that kind of blocks us is we forget that God has remi He's told us, don't worry about tomorrow. Mm. There are so many things that we can be doing today to honor God or really just to make ourselves a little bit better. So, um, we pick up in David's story. We meet him when he's super, super young. Mm -hmm. And there's this crazy war going on. All of David's brothers have gone off to war. And David is sent on an, an errand on a mission. And he kind of comes face to face with a really a God-ordained opportunity. Mm -hmm. And he has some choices to make. So we'll kind of pick up in his story. You want to yeah. share? Yeah, it's in 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel mm -hmm. chapter 17, verse 32 is where we're going to start reading. And it, like you were saying, David had been back home and he was tending sheep and all mm -hmm. of that stuff. And everybody else is out war and he's doing the... Yeah. 
mundane. He hadn't played MASH yet. Yes, he hadn't played <laughs> MASH yet. Or he was probably playing MASH all the time. Right. About what he wanted to do. From shepherd to... Yeah, and I, I want to live in a mansion, not a shack. I want to live in the palace, not back here. Right. And uh, so David is tending these sheep and all of this stuff is happening. And he's doing the mundane. And it's kind of been the same day after day after day. And maybe you kind of know what it's like to be doing the same thing day after, after day, day after day. And so David goes to run an errand where he goes to the battlefield to meet his brothers. And while he's there, there's this guy named Goliath. Right. And he is down in this valley and he is shouting up at David and his brothers. And he's talking about how he's going to dishonor God and how he's going to destroy their family. He's going to overtake their kingdom. And David just starts to ask some questions like, who is this guy down here yelling at everybody? Right. And why are y'all not doing anything to stop him? David is like, I'm ready. This is a little hood term. It's like, I'm ready to run these hands. And so <laughs> Wait, I'm going into the valley. Hands? Yeah, run these hands. Oh. Shoot the one. Run the hands. He's going to catch the fade. We're going to fight fisticuffs, a scuffle. Okay, we, whatever we got you it. want. We, you okay. get it. I'm and so somebody's in the background. They're going to get world star. All that stuff is going to happen. <laughs> and so 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 32, that's where we pick up. It says, David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight. This is David saying, I'll go and fight. Saul replied, you are not able to go against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man. And he has been a warrior from his youth. Like he's been right. a warrior for as long as you've been alive. You're not going to go fight this guy. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, rescued the sheep from his mouth, and when it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your mm -hmm. servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. So David is like, hey, all of these things that I've been doing, I fought bears, I fought lions, and that was just part of my day-to-day -day job, and I'm not going to let this dude be any different. Right. When something happened, I seized the moment, and now I'm going to take advantage of this moment just like I have every other moment in the past. Right. So what I really love about that is it kind of takes us back to last week where we were talking about the lady at the well and how we should let our past shape us. Mm -hmm. Now, it's interesting that we might think that, you know, his position as a shepherd maybe wouldn't connect to his future. But yeah. he's like, because I was a shepherd, because I've had the opportunity to go up against these wild beasts, in a way, God has been preparing David for this very, very moment. Mm. So he's like, I'm not scared of that. I've had wild beasts try to come kill me, and I killed them with my bare hands. Bare hands. Bare He hands. killed a bear with his <sighs> bare hands. Are we doing this right now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, David I'm... killed a bear with his bare hands. It's just like you said, everything that he had done had shaped him for it. Right. But I think the, the great thing about it is, even though his past had shaped him, when he was face to face, with Goliath and mm -hmm. there with his brothers, he still had to make a decision to take advantage of the opportunity in front of him. Oh, definitely. And so even though he was equipped and even though he was prepared and even though his past had shaped him, he still had to have the courage to go forth with what he was doing and take advantage of it. And I think it's just about taking stock of the situation. It's saying, right. what can I do right now that'll set me up for where I ultimately want to get to later. Right. And so David, whether he had goals or whatever, his next step was, hey, what is honoring God? Honoring God right now is doing what I need to do to get this Philistine out of the way so that the mission of God can be advanced. Right. At the time when he was tending sheep, his best thing to do was, I'm supposed to be doing what my parents have asked me to do, so I need to be tending my sheep. I need to be fighting off bears and lions when they come and mm -hmm. try to take away my sheep. And that's the question that you and I have to ask ourselves now. What's the best thing to be doing right now? Whether it's preparing for my future. Right. Maybe I'm a junior and I need to start thinking about what I need to do to be getting into college. Maybe I'm a senior and I've already forgotten to take the SAT or the ACT. And now I need to take my next steps to see if I can still go to school in the fall. Maybe it is that I'm struggling right. with my online work, but I need to make sure that I stay on top of it so that when we do go back in the fall, I'm ready to advance to my next grade and my next step. And I absolutely love the story of David for that, because like you said, he literally took advantage of whatever was in front of him mm -hmm. right there. 
Uh, a little down further, it talks about how they actually tried to give David this armor from one of the older, <laughs> like, warriors in the camp. And David goes, no, I don't need any of this stuff. I just need this slingshot mm -hmm. and this smooth rock, like a couple of smooth stones. And it goes to say that he didn't have to do it like anybody else. He didn't compare his life and compare the way he got stuff done to mm -hmm. everybody else. He didn't say, hey, I need to use a sword because you guys use a sword. Uh, he was just comfortable being who he was and using what he had in the moment. Okay, so this is a total side note, but one of the ways that we've been kind of keeping ourselves entertained during the mm -hmm. season is we are rewatching all of the Marvel movies. Okay, that's um, a and good so thing to we do. are we just finished Spider Man Homecoming, and the story of David actually reminds me of a scene in that movie where um, Tony Stark comes and he takes away Spider Man's suit because Spider Man has really kind of stepped out of line, mm. and Spider Man says to him, he's like, "I'm nobody without this suit." And, 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 and Tony says to him, well, if you're nobody without it, then you're nobody with it. With it. Mm. And so a lot of times when we kind of look at our lives and we think about ourselves, like we feel like we have to have the makeup and the friends and we mm. have to have the shoes and the look and all these kind of accolades. But we have to remember that we are who we are because of who God is. And a lot of times, like we have to remember, before we need to hear what God wants us to do, we really need to remember who God says we are, especially in the midst of fighting giants or in the midst of maybe being denied by people who are supposed to love us, but they're not, you know, for us. And even in the midst of betrayal and hurt and our own personal mistakes, we need to remember first that God loves us. Like mm -hmm. that will get you through some really, really rough days. Mm -hmm. Like just the basic truth that God loves us just as we are, just as he created us and all of that. The second thing is you are exactly who you need to be. Mm. Like exactly who you need to be. It, it, it's so good. It's so good. And, and not that we need to like spend our days trying to compare ourselves to one another. I, I just, I think of how many activities people have that lead them into these worlds where they're like, I need to be like someone else. Mm. If I want to be an influencer, if I want to be successful, it has to look like this. Mm. Well, what if God is calling you to be a successful influencer that looks like something that the world has never seen, wow. but you're so busy spending your time taking notes from somebody who's doing it mediocre in God's eyes. Mm -hmm. um, but really, God's like, if you would just focus on me and remember who you are, I can make you so much bigger and so much better, and you will go on to do great things in mm. your name, not in the name or in the shadow of someone else, um, but because God has gifted you and blessed mm. you in a certain way, mm -hmm. right? What yeah, you say? I think the, the next thing is you are exactly where you need to be. And uh, so you mean I, like stuck in my house? Yes, I mean like stuck at your house. I mean like mm. living wherever you're living. I was convinced back home that I needed to leave home in order to do something mm -hmm. great and I needed to like travel to these far off lands. But that's not the truth. The Lord has placed you right where you are because he needs you to impact that place and he needs you to start doing something right there and the other thing is you have everything that you need and you don't need like you said anything else you don't need any more followers than you have now mm -hmm. you don't need any extra than you have now the Lord has given you everything you need you have another chance meaning today is a brand new day you are still alive you are still breathing and God has given you another chance to make it right and the last thing is you have today Right. It's a day you've never seen before. It's a day that once it's gone, you will never, ever see again. And the Lord wants us to maximize each of those days. Your life is just a collection of every day. Every and day. And whether you maximize it or whether you waste it is the culmination of who we become. Uh, that is so good because... I, you know, Jada, she talks a lot about how she kind of came to be this, this great Bible teacher. Mm -hmm. And she says, I started with just me. You know, I would read my Bible and I would think about how I would teach it to someone else. And then she's like, and then I got this little small Bible study together in college. Mm. And I taught a few. What, what's the big thing that you're wanting to do? How can you break that down into smaller steps? Do you want to be a journalist? Do you want to be a basketball player? Well, just because you can't get to the gym to practice basketball, can you be dribbling at home? Mm -hmm. Or can you, if you... If you can't dribble at home, can you do push-ups? Can you get your body stronger? Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we feel like it has to be cookie cutter and like fit into this picture 
perfect way of how it's always been done before mm. to where we really can't dream and see how maybe we can start building on our dreams and working towards them right now in the moment, in this place, in this time today. Yeah, that's so good. So like uh, most of you guys know I'm going to the NBA soon. <clears throat> and so I've really been doing those push-ups and stuff, just getting my body ready, uh, doing dribbling. y'all. I've been doing all of that stuff because as soon as this is over, I'm going right back to the league, right where I belong. Mm. And so here's the deal. Here's the, here's the final thing is that <laughs> you and I, we sometimes have a tendency to focus on our past and to say, I'm not prepped for this moment or I'm not deserving of this moment that I have. And then sometimes, like the game of MASH, we focus too much on the future and we go, oh, I can't wait till I get this. I wish I had this. High school is going to be different. Middle school will be different. Eighth mm -hmm. grade will be different. Next year will be different. Then I get a chance to do what the Lord has called me to do. I get a chance to be who I'm supposed to be. But the truth is that at some points in our life, God doesn't want us focusing on our past or our future. He wants us focusing on today. And so that's our question to you. What are you going to do today to maximize this life that God has given you? Um, will you pray for us, Randy, that we just maximize this time? I will. I will. Um, dear Lord, um, thank you for this unique time. Um, some of us may see it as a setback, um, but ultimately, can you just rewire our minds and our hearts to see it as a gift and an opportunity, dear Lord? Never before have we had the opportunity to be completely focused on you, um, but to allow you to speak back to us, just to reveal to us what the plans are that you have for our lives, dear Lord. Can you remove any feelings of anger or animosity or disappointment or sadness and just open up our eyes? Give us your eyes, your heart, to allow us to see the unique opportunities right now here in this moment. Um, replace those negative feelings with feelings of just gratefulness and thanksgiving. Um, but ultimately, dear Lord, just show us how we can in this place, in this time, begin to minister for your kingdom and to work towards our future, dear Lord. Um, so we love you. Um, we thank you for today. Um, we thank you for redeeming our past, dear Lord. Um, but ultimately, allow us to do the next best thing and the next right thing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, thank you again for joining us. Mm -hmm. We would love to continue the conversation with you mm -hmm. in small groups that are meeting right now digitally all around the country and all around the city and state. And so if you would like to join one of those small groups, if you'll click the link below, we'll call you this week and get you connected to one of those small groups. And if today you want to talk to somebody a little bit more about your relationship with Christ or maybe yeah. even starting a relationship with Christ, that same link will give you a way to connect with somebody who can walk you through those things. Once again, thanks for watching. Watching, and we'll see you next week.